Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Diva. This is video 16, and today we're talking about the arpeggiator and the clock panel. So basically these two sections right over here. So let's get to our presets, eight templates folder, and then the init MS Rev 1. Go back to our main, increase our sustain, and kind of bring our cutoff down a little bit, and bring down our volume just so we don't hurt our ears. So we have something like this. Now, if we want to have an arpeggiator going, so we need to turn it on, right? So the button right over here, where it says arp, let's click this on, and let's see what we have here. And that's just holding down some notes and it's gonna play those notes individually. So over here on mode, this is up. So whatever chord you're gonna be pressing, it's gonna play those notes in a sequential way going upwards in pitch. Now there's a few different ways to play this. So the next one we have here is gonna be down. So obviously the exact opposite. So once you play a chord, it's gonna play the notes from the highest pitch to the lowest pitch. Next up we have up and down, and now this is gonna play it up like we just did on the first one and then back down like we did on the second one. So those three notes that I'm playing, so one, two, three, back to two, back to one, back to two, back to three, back to two, back to one, so on and so forth. Now we also have an up and down version two. So the difference for this one is instead of playing it up and down, just back and forth and back and forth, it's gonna play the first note twice, go to the next note if it's three, and then go to the third note, play that one twice, go back to the second one, and then go back to the first one, play that twice. So really the lowest notes and the highest notes are gonna be played twice. So take a listen to this. Okay, so hopefully we, uh, that makes sense. Now we have random, which is pretty self-explanatory. Whatever notes you play, it's just gonna pick a random order to play those notes in. And then the last one we have here at the very top is called played. So whatever order you hit the keys in, that's gonna be the pattern that the ARP is gonna play. So if we did something like this, or let's do something different. So I'm gonna hit one, two, three. So it really depends on the order that you press the notes in, and then it's just going to repeat that order, so on and so forth. So moving on from there, now we have octaves. So let's put this back to up, which is kind of the most default way. So it kind of makes a little bit more sense. So now depending on how many octaves we want to go up, this is going to be the spot that we want to reach for. So right now it's on one, right? So if we play a note, it's just going to pulse at that same pitch because it's staying in one octave. Now, if we select two or put a mouse wheel or our cursor over and scroll up on a mouse wheel to go to two, we're basically hitting the, the whatever note we're playing and then one octave up and then it just repeats and repeats and repeats. And keep in mind, watch these little LED lights because on one, it just stays solid. But when, once we go to two, this is going to tell us what octave that we're currently listening to. So if we go up to three, notice that these lights go up three spots. And then if we go up to four, now let's say we do two different notes. So you'll notice here, if I'm playing two notes, it's gonna play two notes at the bottom octave here, and then it goes up and plays the same two notes at the next octave, then the same two notes at the next octave, and so on and so forth. And we can see when this changes as that light changes. Okay, so it pretty much makes sense. So now over here we have the progression. So this one's a little bit interesting to wrap your mind around. So by default, this is gonna be serial, right? So basically what this is telling us is how are these notes gonna be played throughout the octaves that we have, right? So basically in a nutshell, the serial plays all the notes then moves octaves up. So we need to have two octaves or more, right? So kind of what we're doing before, if we have two octaves here, it's select on serial, we play two notes. Plays our first two in the in the first octave, and then it plays these same two notes in the next octave. So if we select this here and we go to round, so this is the same serial, but it jumps octaves down again. Now we need to have three or more octaves for this. So let's go to three, and it's easier to kind of listen to it and be like, okay, that's what that's doing. So here's two notes. So 
So in this example, we're playing two notes here on the first octave, then it goes to the next one, plays the same two notes, then it goes to the next one, plays the same two notes, and then instead of repeating back at the beginning, it goes down. And there's a couple of different versions of this over here. So next up we have leap. And this one might be the most confusing to wrap our head around, but basically this is gonna play a note and then it jumps to the next octave up and then plays the next note. So for example, if I played a C and then I played a D as, as two different notes at the same time, first it's gonna play that C in the, in the octave that we press. And then even though we're, we're pressing the D in the same octave, it's not gonna play it in that octave, it's gonna play the D one octave higher than that. So this is what this would sound like. And it kind of just repeats so on and so forth like that. So if we have three notes like this, we're going to play this. We're going to hold those notes here for a chord. So basically whatever chord we're playing, it plays the original octave. And then the next note, it says, okay, this is the next note, but we're going to play this one up an octave. Then it looks for the next note, plays that in the octave that we're playing in. And then the next note, it brings that up one octave and so on and so forth. So it's a little wild to wrap your head around, but if you spend some time with it, it's going to be like, oh, okay, I, I kind of get what it's doing there. And the next step, we have a repeat. So this one is kind of like leap, but it repeats the same note for all the octaves before playing the next one. So take a listen to this. And then we have three notes. Try two octaves here. So with this setting here, if we have an up, repeat, and two octaves, this is probably the easiest way to understand this. So for example, we're gonna be playing these three notes, this one, those three. And the next octave up would be, so we would expect it to play it like that, but with this, it will go Hit the note, go up the next octave, hit the next note in their sequence, go up that octave, and then hit the next note in our sequence, and then go up an octave from there. So it'll really sound like this. So with those, with those three notes, basically the first note that gets hit, it plays that, then it plays the octave of that, then the next note plays that, and then the octave of that, and then the third note plays that, and then the octave of that. So sounds like this. And really with this repeat and with these leaps, it just takes a little bit of time to kind of spend with it, kind of play some notes, really listen to see what it's doing, change up the octaves until it really kind of cements it in. Because these last two can be a little bit confusing, but uh, yeah, I thought we'd talk about those a little bit there. So last up here, let's go back to serial, kind of like we're used to, we're going up and going two octaves here, or maybe let's go one octave for this example here. So restart, so this is very interesting here. So I have this thing set up that I brought here. So we have five notes here, we're gonna be playing this. Wait, hold on right here. One, two, three, four, five. So we have five notes here, right? So if we're playing an ARP right here, let's play uh, our song over here. I think we have it muted. Yes, we have it muted here. So if we're playing something like this, let's slow this down dramatically here. So basically we're playing five notes right there, right? One, two, three, four, five. And then it restarts the ARP. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So now over here, if we go to our restart, right now we have none. So whatever notes we're playing, it's just repeating that uh, that ARP that we're going, so on and so forth. So for example, if we click this down here, we have values of none, which we were just on. We have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 14, 16, 24, and 32. So the easiest way to demonstrate this is if we select this here and go to four, right? So what's this, what this is going to do is it's going to play four of the notes before the ARP starts. So right now, as, as we just talked about, we have five notes. So what's going to happen is we're going to play one, two, three, four. And even though we have a fifth note in our chord here, it says we have four notes before we restart. So it's not even going to play this fifth note. It's going to go one, two, three, four. Oh, restart. One, two, three, four. It's at four of a limit. Restart, so on and so forth. So check this out. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So keep that in mind once you're using this restart over here. So if you have a certain number of, of restart, like you have four, but maybe you're playing notes that have five or six or seven chords, those extra ones past your fourth uh, fourth note won't even be played. So 
let's take a little bit uh, more of a dive into this here. So if we have five, this is basically as if, as if this were gonna be a none because we're limiting this restart at five, but we also have five notes. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five so on and so forth. Now it deviates and gets interesting here if we go to six, for example. So now it's gonna one, two, three, four, five, and then it's gonna go six, going back to the first one, and then it restarts again. So we're really gonna to listen to this low note twice. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, one. So it gets a little confusing after a certain while, but the more you kind of play with it, hopefully that cements the idea in. Even if we go, for example, seven, and maybe let's bring this up an octave just a little bit so we can kind of hear it a little bit better. So hopefully that makes sense here. We have five notes and we're restarting every seven notes. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two, and so on and so forth. So kind of a cool feature, definitely keep in mind how to use this and so on and so forth. So moving on from there, let's put this back to none here and let's take a look at this sync here. So this is kind of cool. So let's say you're playing something like this, right? You have, uh, let's mute this right over here and we have something going on like this. You have a drum loop and you play, play an octave or a NARP. This sync is always going to keep us in time. Even if we hit a note out of time, if the sync is on, it's still going to keep the clock correctly to whatever BPM that you have. Now let's play. Let me try to play off time. So it's still gonna keep me locked in there, right? So now if I take the sync off and really try to be off time, let's go to two octaves or something like that. So right there, I'm totally out of time because the sync is off. Now if I turn this on, let's make our drum loop a little bit longer, remove this to repeat this. So I'm gonna play out of time intentionally. Now when we turn on sync, kind of gets us right back on track again. So depending on how you want to play your patch and so on and so forth, keep in mind that this sync is a pretty cool option. If you always wanna stay in time and you're kind of just a little bit off, make sure to keep that on. Or if you want to have instant notes hit once you hit them and really just feel it, then turn this off over here. So moving on from this, so we've covered the arpeggio here. So now we need to talk about this clock. So this is actually kind of interesting how this is set up over here. So this clock section here, it sets the speed at which the arp is gonna play, right? So right now we've been kind of slow at one over four. One over eight, one over 16, and one over 32. Now we have four entries here and it might seem a little minuscule. However, this is kind of where this multiply comes in. It's a very cool uh, feature here. So if we're at one over four, now this multiply, if you turn this all the way to the left, it's gonna show a value of 50. Now this is gonna be half speed. Right, so, and then if we go to double click default here, it's gonna be exactly what this says here, so one over four. Now if we go all the way to the right, which is gonna show a value of 200, this is gonna be twice as long. It's all the way to the left. So hopefully that makes kind of sense there and always double click to go back to the default here. So while we do have four different entries, we can always change this multiply all the way to the left, all the way to the right, double click for the center and that's gonna kind of keep you more so on time or you can do small little variations of that if you would like to. So moving on from there, we have swing and this is gonna be changing the feel of the, uh, of the ARP here. So let's do something a little bit faster. Let's go to maybe one over eight. 
So we have something like that, and let's see what that sounds like. Let's do something nice over here. So you kind of get like almost like a shuffle kind of feel. So all the way to the left is normal. And then all the way to the right is the strongest shuffle. So kind of interesting to get a di different feel, a different rhythmic feel with your ARP as well that will still relatively stay in time. So yeah, even just a small little amount of this value for the swing can kind of get you some pretty cool, uh, pretty cool rhythms, different change the vibe up a little bit here, make it sound a little bit more, I guess, organic, maybe something like that. But uh, yeah, so that's basically the ARP and the clock section. I know it's kind of a lot to take in, but uh, especially the progression in the serial, especially these leap and repeat can be a little bit confusing, but I promise you spend a little bit of time with it and kind of really listen to see what the notes are doing and the chords that you're playing, and it'll all make sense in, uh, in due time. So hopefully you learned something. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.